Well, good morning, Valley Rise. How y'all doing this morning? Come on, you can do better than that. How you doing this morning? Amen, amen, amen. Come on, I know it's dark and cloudy outside, but it don't have to be in your heart. You could get some Jesus in your heart today. You could be smiling even if it's going to rain out there. I'm so excited to be together this morning. Thanks so much for being here with us. If I haven't had the chance to meet you yet, my name is Pastor Christian. You're joining us at our second of three services today, so thanks so much for being here with us. Hope you had a good week. Hopefully you had a great April. Hey, let me help you out. We are five months in to 2023. Remember five months ago, I stood up here and I said, this year will be the best year of your life if it's the best year spiritually. Y'all forgot already? It's only been five months, my God. It'll be the best year of your life if it's the best year spiritually. How are you doing? You're five months in. Next month's going to be halfway. So if you haven't made some changes, maybe if there's stuff that you go, man, I don't like this part of my life in 2023. Hey, let's lean into that and allow God to change it this year. Let's not leave May holding on to the same things you had when you came into it with. Let's push into God this month and go, God, what could you do inside of us if we surrendered everything to you, if we allowed you to work in and through us, if we turned over control of our lives to him? I mean, you know, that's the hardest part, is let him be in control. But I believe if we do that, your May will be amazing and sets the precedence for the rest of your year. Hey, I'm so excited. We're starting a new series today called The Battle Belongs to the Lord. I'm so excited about it. I'm going to pray, and we'll jump right into part one. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here together. God, thank you for each and every person who's here. God, you brought us all together. You knew before the beginning of the earth that we would be sitting in this room together right now. God, I pray that we would get everything you have for us this morning. Jesus, that we would absorb all that we can get of you, that we'd be filled with your presence, we'd be encouraged by your people, we'd be encouraged into our purposes today, God. I pray that as we walk closely with you and with people, that we would see our lives changed and transformed. Jesus, I pray today that you'd be here with us. Let us hear from you. We need to hear from you, God. Not a good message, a God message from your heart to our heart. I pray that we'd leave here closer to you and closer to each other. In Jesus' mighty, powerful name, and everyone said, amen and amen. Hey, we're doing a series called The Battle Belongs to the Lord. What is this series about? I, I have all these conversations throughout the week where people talk to me about the things that they're up against, what they're going through in life, the battles they're facing, the things that they come against. And, and the more conversations I have, the more amazed I am to find that our idea of who God is and what he can do on your behalf is far less than who God actually is and what he can do on our behalf. And oftentimes we limit God because we don't understand God. I mean, you know, you're never going to fully understand God. It's like, like it's the, the creation can never understand the creator. It's like Siri. I could come home and go, hey, Siri. And you know what she's going to say? What? You know, I'm going to say, I had a bad day. And you know what she's going to say? Can I Google bad day? And she can kind of understand me, but she can't ever really understand me because she's the creation and we're the creator. But I believe if we can study the creator, we can learn some stuff about him that allows us to live life differently on this earth. How many know Jesus did not step out of eternity and come down to earth and die on a cross so that you could live the same life you would have lived if he hadn't? Did you hear that again? Jesus did not do all that he did so that you could live the same life you would have lived if he didn't do that. So how is Jesus' life being lived out through you changing your everyday life? Today, we're going to look at some of the, the amazing attributes of the God we serve. Because when you see God clearly, you see obstacles clearly. When you see God clearly, you see life clearly. And your perspective is powerful. So this morning, we're going to fix our perspective on the God that we serve. We're in 2 Chronicles 20. And this is, Chronicles is an amazing book in the Old Testament with a lot of great battles in it. And it details all these different battles that the Israelites, God's people, walked through. The beautiful thing about God is that he doesn't change. How many of you know God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Scripture says God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Micah tells us that, and Romans 13 tells us that. It says he doesn't change at all. That the same God we're going to read about today is the same God that's capable of operating in your life today. 2 Chronicles 20, after this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Munites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Now, every time you hear Moabites, 
Ammonites, Canaanites, any of the ites, these were giant clans, okay? So these were the giants in the Bible. You can go and track their legacy from Genesis 3 when it says the sons of God went to the daughters of men and produced the men of great renown. You can follow those hybrid humans that came on the earth pretty much. This is where we get the giants from all the way through the battles. Anytime you see God, this, I remember this helped me so much. How many of you have ever been reading the Bible where it says God told them to kill everyone, man, woman, and child, and thought, my God, why would you do that, God? Like, you're God. You love people, right? The only times you ever see that happen in Scripture is when it was a hybrid flesh. It was this person that was not fully human. It was the sons of the fallen angels, is what Genesis tells us, that had created a clan of giants. These giants, they say, were as tall as the cedars of Lebanon. Do you know how tall the cedars of Lebanon are? Just take a guess. 36 feet on average. 36 feet. Can you imagine walking around and fighting people 36 foot tall? You think you had a bully in school. <laughs> imagine that bully walking out in junior high. My goodness. Uh, 36 foot tall. So these are the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Munites, and they declared war on the man with the greatest name in the Bible, Jehoshaphat. Aren't you glad your parents didn't name you that? Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. You know what's amazing? The enemy always tries to use dead things to come against you. Isn't it amazing? The enemy always uses dead things in our life. That old habit, that old thought, that old memory. If anybody finds out, that old story nobody knows about, that secret you've never told anybody. The dead things that he uses to attack us. And they're already at Hazan Tamar. And this was another name for En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news, and he went and said, let's get the army ready because we're about to go to battle. He went and said, hey, we need to go make plans with other clans and other tribes and other countries so that they'll help us fight. No, that's not what it says. It says Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news, and he begged the Lord for guidance. Hey, can I ask you this? What is your first response to difficulties in life? Is running to God your first response or your last resort? Is it the first thing you do when difficulties come against you and you go, Oh, God, I didn't expect that medical report. I didn't expect this bill. I didn't expect this crisis. I didn't expect this tragedy. Is the first thing you do go cry out to God or is it to begin to try and fix the issue yourself? He cries out to God for guidance. He begs the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. Oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, when we are faced with any calamity such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. You know what they do in difficulties when something's coming against them that they don't know how they're going to face? Their first response is to run to God, and the second thing they do is to begin to remind themselves of all God's done in the past for them. This is so key. The God you serve is the same God we're talking about today. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what they would do anytime they got to these mountains in their life is begin to proclaim all the times God had been faithful in the past. I don't know how we're going to get through this, but I remember when God rescued us from the Philistines. I remember when God parted the Red Sea. I remember when he delivered us out of Egypt. I remember when he gave us the promised land. That same God won't fail us now. One of my favorite verses, one of my favorite songs right now is a song called Firm Foundation by Maverick City Music. And there's a line in there that's so good. It says this, he's been faithful for generations. Why would he stop now? 
I want you to hear this. The God you serve is the God who's been faithful for generations and generations and generations and generations and generations. Why would he stop now? Why would he change now? No, Scripture tells us he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you know what that means when we encounter difficulties in our life? You know what my first response is? Yes, God, this is hard, but I remember at 16 when you saved my life. And God, this is difficult, but I remember at 19 when I flipped that vehicle. I thought I was going to be dead, and you just protected me with your hand. I remember at 23, God, when I almost ended everything, and you spared me from myself. I remember at 27, God, where I thought I was lost, and you were faithful, and you rescued me from my own hardships. You begin to remind yourself of how faithful God has been to you. Most of the times, you know what we do? The exact opposite. This is how it's going to go down, God. You really going to let me go like this? God, I thought you were going to help me, God. God, I thought you were going to be here. I thought you were supposed to be like bigger than this, God. I thought you were going to be... No, you begin to remind yourself of the God you serve. How many have kids in here? I have kids, and my kids are kids like your kids. Sometimes I get scared, and... My kids sleep like right above me. Their room's kind of like right above our room. So sometimes they, they like will ask me questions like kids, Dad, what, what if like somebody breaks in in the middle of the night? What if somebody like sneaks in through a window? What if, and I go, okay, y'all don't have to worry about that. First of all, daddy's going to hear anything before y'all hear anything, okay? And the dog's going to hear anything before daddy hears anything. And an alarm set, so you don't have to worry about it. But what if they do? Well, if they do, okay, and then I hear them in your room, I'll just stick my hand straight through the floor and grab them and rip them down and kill them. My girls, believe me. Okay, good. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And they go to sleep. If only you knew what your God was capable of, you would sleep soundly at night. If you understood the power your God has. My daughters rest thinking their daddy can jump a story up and rescue them. I go to sleep knowing the God of the heavens and the earth is holding me in his hands. I go into work knowing he's carrying me and nothing can come to me that he hasn't already seen. The God of the heavens and the earth is on your side. He begins to remind them, why would God fail us now? And now, see what the armies of the Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. Now, see how they rewarded us? For they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. I think this is a roadmap for what we do in moments where we face painful, hard, difficult mountains in our life. That when you get to times where you don't know what to do, the bill comes in, the medical report comes in, the family tragedy happens, and you go, God, I don't know what to do. You can say this, God, I'm powerless against this mighty thing that is about to attack me. I don't know what to do, but I'm looking to you for help. As all of the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and children, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. You know what I love about this? God is attracted to order and excellence at every level. The Israelites go, okay, we're not just going to send them in. We're not just going to send them No, everybody get your families and come stand before God. And they all come, families, standing in the right of Mamas and daddies, it's time for us to order our families again, to, to be mamas and daddies. Listen, your kids may have a lot of feelings. As you know as grown-ups, their feelings aren't fair and they don't last. We need mamas and daddies to be mamas and daddies again. To stand with their family and go, no, no, we stand before God. That's who we answer to. As they stand before God and present themselves, the Spirit of the Lord falls on one of the men that was standing there. His name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaniah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. Can I be honest with you? There's a level of breakthrough that happens in your life when you realize the battle is not yours. 
There's no amount of stressing, anxiousness, frustration, worrying that can solve a battle that God is going to fight for you. No amount of worrying can do that. God says, do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. There's a breakthrough that happens in your life when you reach those levels where you go, God, this is your thing. You know, God has his things and we have our things. Let me, let me just show it to you. So like when we started this church, I remember the first two years, it was like, like the weight of taking care of all this was like paralyzing. I'd lay in bed at night. What if the money don't come in? What if the bills don't get paid? What if this doesn't happen? What if that? What if the old people? What if this? It was like an elephant sitting on my chest every night. And I'll never forget the day where God so clearly showed me, Christian, it's my job to provide. It's your job to manage. It's my job to worry about how I'm going to care for my house. It's your job to manage for it when I do. Hey, there is a level of breakthrough that happens in your life when the things you worry about, you go, God, those are your problems. I don't have to carry that. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to wonder. I don't have to fret. I don't have to be anxious. I can sleep in peace because I know the God of creation is holding those things in his hand. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the Zen. Now, I love this. Don't you love how God is? Watch this. <laughs> this is awesome. This is what God does to all of us. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. By this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I got this. Don't you worry. So tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, y'all be ready to fight. What? Time out, God. What you mean? What you see? Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. Time out, God. You just said the battle was yours. Why do we got to show up? If you're going to be there, why do I got to be there? March out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jerul, but you will not even need to fight. I want you to hear this. How many know God fights his own battles? And he's pretty good at it. God doesn't need us to fight on his behalf. God fights his own battles. He goes, you won't even need to fight. Go stand out there. But when you get there, I'm going to fight for you. If God is for me, who can be against me? I love this verse. If God is for me, who can be against me? God shows them, hey, I'm going to show you where they're coming from. I'm going to show you what they're doing. And you're going to go stand out there, but you're not even going to have to fight. You know what's awesome? Sometimes we want to like help God in our battles. Like we think we can be like God's hype man. Yeah, God, go get him, God. You got it, God. Woo! Yeah, God. God doesn't need our help. God's great at being God. He says things like Romans 12, 19. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For scriptures say, I will take revenge and I will pay them back, says the Lord. I saw a video on Twitter this week that maybe you saw. It was a video from the Satanist conference that they had, apparently, in the last month. And it was a lady holding a Bible on stage. She was, I guess she was a witch or something, and she's pulling the pages out of the Bible, and everyone's cheering. We hate you, God. Yeah, and everybody's cheering, everybody's cheering. And somebody posted, a famous Muslim figure posted it and said, I'd like to see them try this with the Quran. And I responded to him and said, this is one of the biggest theological differences between us. Our God doesn't need our help. Our God doesn't need our help. He fights his own battles. And if God is for me, who can be against me? He says, go and stand there. Here's where they're coming up, but you won't even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. You see what they did before they ever went into battle? They began to worship the Lord. Do you know worship defeats your battles? When you begin to worship, when you begin to praise, something happens, it changes things. I want you to hear this. He bowed low to the ground. All the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. 
Can I be honest with you? Your mouth has a message in it, and it matters. And in times of trouble and trials, what you speak impacts things. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue, and those who use it well are wise. What do you speak when hard times come? What's the things that come out? I can't believe this happened again. Or that, God, you said you, I can, God, how's it going to happen to me? Said so my life always, oh, like I can't ever get up. It's like this always bad. It's like, what if you begin to praise God? God, I know what this looks like, but I know that God I serve is bigger. God, I know this seems overwhelming, but I know there's nothing that you can't handle. God, I know that this seems scary, but I know that if you are for me, who can be against me? My mouth has a message, and it matters what I speak in times of trials. They begin to proclaim God's goodness, how awesome he is. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm. This is so huge. Do you know there's a limit to what God can do in your life? There's a threshold of where God can operate in your life, and it stops with your belief. You see this with Jesus. Jesus never healed someone with asking, without asking them the same question. Do you believe you can be healed? Because if you don't believe God can do something in your life, he's not going to do something in your life. If you do believe he can do something in your life, he is going to do something in your life. God created you a free will being. You know what that means? You're not a robot. God doesn't go love me, and you go, okay, I'm going to love you today, God. No, he designed you to have free will, which means he wants to use you as much as you believe he can, as much as you're willing to be used. He says, believe in all that God can do, and you will succeed. Where is the limit of your belief in what God can do in your life? Just where's the limit? I'll be honest, I'm still finding that limit with God. I could give you key moments in the journey of the church. Y'all have heard me preach about a million times when we're building the building and they go, we need $50,000. That was a key moment for me where I just said, God, if you're real, then you can come up with this because we don't have it. And God did. I'm still finding that line with God going, God, where is the end of what you can do if I believe? There is no limit to what he can do in our lives if we truly believe that he wants to work in our lives. Early the next morning, they go out, believe in your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord, for his faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they begin to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, and Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. Did you see this? The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, then they began attacking each other. So then when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, by, I'm just here, by the time they got to where God told them to start at, hey, be out there ready to fight. That's all they know is happening. Okay, God, we're going to go get ready. By the time they get out there to where they're supposed to be to fight, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. We're talking about a shock. <laughs> Showing up to battle. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? And you crest that hill and everyone's dead. Everyone's already dead. All they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Don't you love how God's plans are so much bigger than our plans? I don't want my best plans for my life. I want God's best plans for my life. Because God's plans trump everyone's plans. I want you to see how God works. Psalms 2.1. It's an amazing verse to show you your God. Why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together against the Lord and against his anointed ones. Let us break their chains, they cry, and free ourselves from slavery to God. But the one who rules in the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. You know what that means? The enemy's best plans at derailing your life, God goes, Ah! That's what you're going to try and do? 
that's the best you got? God's up there laughing because nothing can stand before our God. When you look around and you see chaos today and war and rumors of war and battles and you're tempted to be anxious, I want you to begin declaring the God you serve. I want you to begin reminding yourself of whose you are, who fights for you, who battles on your behalf. Because when you understand that, you walk differently. You live differently. He says, you won't even have to fight. I'm going to fight for you. And at the very moment, they begin to sing and give praise. This is so huge as I close. I want you to understand this. Praise is poison to the enemy. I want you to hear this. Praise is poison to the enemy. Poison. Whenever the enemy attacks you in your life and you feel that and you go, I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm being attacked on every side. You know what you begin to do? You begin to talk about how good and how powerful your God is. Because the strength does not lie in you. The strength lies in him. We're just protected for by him. Provided for by him. Covered for by him. Can I ask you a question though? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that God, the God of the heavens and the earth, who breathed life into you, who shaped the earth, who could do anything he wanted to do, can also provide for you if you trust him too? can also open doors in your life and bring friendships and heal you and restore you and do anything you believe he can do inside of you. I think the limit to what God can do in us oftentimes is us. Us reaching battles and going, yeah, yeah, I know like God's there for me, but like cancer? Yeah, I mean, I know God's there for me, but like we've, we've been trying so hard and we can't even have a child and like, I mean... I know God's there for me, but my marriage is literally so dead, Christian, if you knew. I know God's there for me, but I've tried, I've, I've searched for 15 jobs, and I feel like I'm not, nobody's taking my job application. I know God is there for me, but... And I just wonder what would happen if you just begin to praise Him for already doing it. I'm just telling you, the secret in your life to God doing things is praising and proclaiming that He's already done it. This isn't like, let me just tell what I do in my personal life. This is how I get through things. When trials hit me, when people hurt me, when there's things that are painful, I just begin to praise God for the other side of it. God, thank you that you're healing this. Thank you that you're restoring this. God, thank you that you're already working in this. Thank you that it's not a surprise to you, God. You've already provided for this thing. This didn't catch you off guard. I'm so grateful I serve the God of the heavens and the earth who's not shaken by anything. I begin to praise him and proclaim how awesome he is. You know what happens when I do that? My circumstances change. God goes to bat for you. Because it's not that the circumstances are always different. It's you're held by God. Do you understand what it means to be held by God? We have a, a trampoline at the house and I have three kids, 10, 8, and 5. Shiloh just turned 5. She's my youngest. And when we got the trampoline, she was probably about two. Come see, Shiloh. She was probably about two. And um, here, come on. Come up here. Come here, Daddy. Y'all give Shiloh a hand. And so Shiloh and me were, you can hold one. She's my shy one. We were, we were out there jumping with Finley and Eli. And I walk outside, and they're all on the trampoline. And Shiloh's like two. And so if you've ever seen kids jump on the trampoline with like a baby, they're jumping and she's like trying to get her center. You know what I mean? She's just like, they're jumping and she's just kind of doing this. And, and I'm sitting there, I'm getting on the trampoline as I'm watching this. And she starts to panic. Ah, daddy, y'all stop. Ah. Everything's going crazy. She doesn't know what to tell to stop. She's screaming at her brother. She's screaming at her sister. She's screaming for Jesus. She doesn't know, she, she know what she needs to stop, but she knows it needs to stop. And so she's just been in a panic trying to settle herself. And all of a sudden, Daddy reaches over and does this. And now we're jumping. And we're having a blast. And she's laughing. And she thinks it's hilarious. And I'm kicking Eli and Finley off the trampoline. And we're having fun. And all of a sudden, the circumstances and situation did not change that she was in. Whose arm she was in changed her circumstances and situation. 
You have a heavenly father, and when you climb up in daddy's arms, it does not matter what comes against you. Nothing can touch you. And I think God oftentimes will allow us to get to the depth of our situations until we climb up in daddy's arms and go, I can't do it on my own. Daddy, I can't save myself. Daddy, I can't rescue me. Daddy, I can't heal me. Daddy, I can't open doors for me. Daddy, I can't provide for myself. And that's why you have a heavenly father. That's why he calls himself a father. Because he goes, climb up in here in daddy's arms. You don't have to worry about a thing. I've got it taken care of. Each and every one of us, God is waiting for that moment with us. To hop up in his arms and let him carry what only he can carry. Because the trampoline seems scary to her, it too. But in daddy's arms, it was an amazing experience. And it was fun. Life can be one of those two things depending on who's carrying you, you or God. Would you bow your heads with me today? God, thank you today that you truly do desire to carry us. God, that you're with us everywhere we go, that there is no circumstance too great for you. I think sometimes, God, we get our eyes on the mountain and we forget to look at you. God, forgive us for those times. We know that our hope, our trust, our security, our provision, our health, our wholeness, it all comes from you, God. We don't have to carry that weight. We don't have to carry those burdens. We don't have to be anxious about them, God. Because the God who sits in the heavens laughs at the plans of the enemy. And God, if you're for us, who can be against us? Let us not in 2023, God, forget about the greatness of who you are. Let us not in 2023 forget that you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who parted the Red Seas. The God that brought Jesus to life. The God that rescued Noah. The God that separated his people out and saved them. God, let us never forget that that's who you are. And that's what you're still capable of doing. God, today, we surrender our burdens to you. If you're here this morning, every eye bowed, every eye closed, you say, Christian, there's stuff I've been carrying that I need to give to Dad. There's burdens I've been trying to juggle that it's crushing me if I'm honest and, and I need to give him to daddy because he's the only one who can do something with every head bowed and every eye closed if that's you and you say Christian that's me today would you just pray with me I, I need help trusting God jumping in having faith for that would you just lift your hand up real quick so I can believe with you this morning amen 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 you put your hands on me pray for you God you see each and every hand God and you know the circumstances and situations you know the mountains they're up against God Thank you that you are the God who created the mountains. You are the God that makes mountains melt like wax, your word says. So God, what can you not do when we put our full trust and hope in you? Today, God, we take that situation and we give it to you, Father. We give it to you, God. We lay it at your feet. We're not walking out of this room holding on to it. We're trusting that it's already cared for. We're believing that you're already doing what you've promised to do, which is provide and care and protect and heal. Thank you, God. We love you, we worship you, and we praise you because you're an amazing God who's capable of doing anything you want to do. Thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace in our lives. Forgive us for the times that we've been the roadblock. God, where our, where our faith of what you could do in us stood in the way, or our disbelief stood in the way, or our... Looking at what was against us instead of for us stood in the way. God, today we just believe that it's all yours. We believe you can do anything you want through us and in us. And we ask that you would. Now, there may be another group of people here this morning that you say, Christian, that sounds awesome, man, but I've never begun that relationship with Jesus. Maybe you've experienced church, you've experienced religion, but you've never encountered a genuine relationship with the creator of the universe. Not based off of if you could perform or be good enough simply based off of your need for him and his death on the cross for you. If that's you and today you say, Christian, I want to make that decision. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This is simply between you and Jesus. I just want to pray for you right where you're at. I'm not going to ask you to come up here or do anything crazy. But if that's you and you say, Christian, I'm going to start that relationship with Jesus today, would you just slip your hand up right where you are so I can pray with you this morning? Amen. Amen. You can put your hands down. And at Valley Rise, we pray this all together. So you can pray it out loud. You can say it under your breath. You can pray it in your heart. As long as you mean it is what we ask. Would you repeat after me? Dear Lord Jesus, today I recognize my need for you. 
Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God, that you came from heaven to earth to live a perfect life, a life I never could have lived, but you did it so that I wouldn't have to. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, I believe you went to the cross to pay for my sin bill so that I wouldn't have to. Thank you, Jesus. I receive your gift. And then, Jesus, I believe on the third day that you rose from the grave to give me new life, hope, and freedom. Today, Jesus, I choose you. I choose to love you, choose to serve you, choose to seek you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty, powerful name, and everyone said amen. Would you give a hand to those who just made the greatest decision of their lives? Amen. Hey, let me help you. This week, when the enemy comes at you with those things, you give them to God. God, this is your problem. I'm not going to let it weigh me down. I'm not going to let it carry me down. I'm not going to let it ruin me. I'm not going to. No, God, I'm going to trust you with this. And then allow God to be God and watch what he does.